Okay, so I'm David Marshall and I did my business policy project on Apple. Today's date is December 10th. And so the industry that Apple is in is the personal electronics industry. This industry includes things like cell phones, laptops, video game systems, really anything that's like an electronic that someone can own. The company overview, going by what they state on their 10K, is the company designs, manufactures, and markets smartphones, personal computers, tablets, wearables, and accessories, and sells a variety of related services. Their fiscal year is 52 or 53 weeks, ending on the last Saturday of every September. And they were established in California in 1977. Their major stakeholders include their customers, employees, investors, and then the employees of suppliers, because that's who they deal with the most. So their strengths include things like their image, because everyone knows someone that has an iPhone or everyone knows of Apple. Their weakness would include their selling price of things, like their iPhones, their uh, computers especially, people see that as like really high priced compared to like other like Microsoft laptops and things like that. Their opportunity is that the demand for like personal electronics is increasing due to COVID-19. So like how classes are all online and things like that, more people were buying laptops. And then their threats is their competition. So like Samsung or Microsoft with Samsung's phones, like the Galaxy and Microsoft's, like their laptops, like the Surface Pro and things like that. So looking at Portal, Porter's five forces model for competitive rivalry, it's a strong force just because of the high aggressiveness of companies and the low differentiation, differentiation differentiation of products. Their bargaining power is strong because of low switching cost and high buyer information. The bargaining power of suppliers is a weak force due to like moderate uh, to high number of suppliers and then high overall supply. Threat of substitutes is a weak force due to low performance of substitutes. And then threats of new entrants is a moderate force due to the high capacity requirements and capacity of potential new entrants. Their value chain, like many companies value chains, it follows like sourcing, manufacturing, warehouse, and distribution. And then they also have recycling, which they're doing a lot more of trying to reduce their carbon footprint. For their tangible and intangible resources, using like the resource-based view, um, you can look at things like their cash, property, plant, and equipment, and their inventory. So for property, plant, and equipment, they reported 36,766 million dollars. For cash, they uh, reported 38,016 million in cash. And then inventory, they reported 4,061 million. Their intangible assets would be things like their training, when they go through training for like managers, things like that, as well as different patents and copyrights that they own. So their implications for the future would be things that they're trying to focus more on research and development and continue that research to come out with like new ideas, new uh, services through like their iPhone, through their Mac, through their like, things like the Apple TV. The one of the important business lessons that they have learned is to not throttle their iPhone batteries because there was a lawsuit that they've been going dealing with for years now about I believe it started with the iPhone 7 where with like the newer phones they would keep their performance the same but the older uh, iPhone got they would like make the battery worse drain faster things like that so they got caught and were sued and they ended up losing and um, they had to pay over 600 million to settle everything. For their entrepreneurial activities and opportunities, the most recent one that they're 
diving into is their AirPods Max, which they just announced yesterday on December 9th. That is their first over-ear headphones that's replacing Beats. But this one's more to compete with uh, higher, like, higher-end brands like Sony and Bose. These ones cost around $549. For their ethical, like how they deal with ethics and things like that, they plan on being 100% carbon neutral for all of its supply chains and products by 2030. For their business revenue and profit growth, for their iPhone they made 137,781 million, their Mac they made 28,622 million, their iPad was 23 thousand seven hundred and twenty four million for like their Apple Watch their uh, Apple TV um, and their speaker they made thirty thousand six hundred and twenty million and then for services like Apple Music Apple News Apple Arcade they made fifty three thousand seven hundred and sixty eight million so what I would recommend them to do is to keep innovating through their iPhones and Macs I would like to see them focus on, like, continue focusing on security and measures like that, like how on the iPhone there's now um, facial recognition, and on their laptops I think there should be facial recognition as well. But right now they currently just have the fingerprint scanner, and then I think they should really focus on sort of reversing their carbon footprint. That way it sort of like reverses everything they had done. Like once they hit that carbon footprint of zero, go above and beyond with that. And then that's my project on Apple.